Hello, it's Alex. Welcome to my channel. Thanks so much for joining me today. I've got a bit of a backlog of things that I have sewn recently to show you. So it's a bit of a kind of oddments, not that the clothes are odd, uh, but yeah, there's not necessarily any kind of cohesive narrative on this video. Just a few bits and pieces to show you. Um, I've been ill with a cold. It was only a cold, but my goodness, it really lasted forever. I think we've all ruined our immune systems over the last few years. Um, so it seemed to take forever and ever to get me back up and running. Um, anyway, I am now. So I'm going to start with what I'm wearing. So you probably know it's not that usual for me to wear black. And I will admit this is uh, just a polo neck is just something I've bought, I haven't made it. Um, but I am really in my comfort zone when I wear black. Um, my kind of attempts to try to wear colours that work with my colouring over the last few years has meant that black has sort of taken, yeah, a bit of a backseat. And I wanted an excuse to wear what makes me feel really, really comfy. It goes back to my gothy teenage years. Um, I wouldn't have been seen dead in any other colour when I was younger. So I wanted to wear, wanted to make a skirt that I could wear um, that was black, but perhaps with a bit of a print. And when I saw this viscose fabric from uh, Lamarzi, I bought it from Lamarzi Fabrics. I've got a leaf, go away. Right. Uh, bought it from Lamarzi Fabrics a few weeks ago. Um, I thought it was perfect for me because although it is largely black, um, if I'll do a close up so you can see, it's got little dashes of colour on it, and one is a sort of rusty colour and one is a pink. So they're my kind of, um, yeah, that rust is my kind of a colour. Um, but I wanted to make a maxi skirt. I had been reading over the summer before we even hit winter and autumn that one of the kind of key trends for this season was longer length skirts and dresses. And whilst, you know, <laughs> Clearly, I'm not somebody that necessarily follows trends, but I do really love long skirts. So to me, it was um, an excuse. So I knew exactly what I wanted, and I've made it. I want this is this is it really, slightly a line, not kind of um, you know like a pencil skirt with a slit at the front. Which one is it? Yeah, here with a slit at the front, uh, not at the side. And I searched high and low for patterns everywhere, couldn't find anything, and I found myself thinking, you know, really what I want is the skirt version of the dress that I'd made from Apolline patterns in the summer. So I thought, why don't I just do that? Um, why don't I just chop the dress off at the waist, add a waistband on, and um, yeah, adapt to the pattern I've already got, and that's exactly what I did. So the dress is called, it's Capri, you know, it's, it's one of these French ones. I'll put up a title. Um, but yeah, I literally took the existing dress pattern. I didn't attempt to do a curved waistband. I just made a waistband and added it on. I added a bit of length because as I said, I wanted it this maxi length. And it just reminded me that actually, you know, we tend to sort of forget that. It's, it's not even really a hack, is it? when all you're doing is adding on a waistband. I did add also some belt loops because I wanted to wear this belt with it. Um, but again, you know, I don't think you have to be some sort of amazing pattern cutter to be able to add some belt loops on. And I am a big fan of using um, drapier fabrics in the winter because although, I'm sure I've said this in previous years, Although we t don't tend to think of floaty drapey fabrics being wintry because we're all trying to keep warm and especially this year, certainly in the UK and I think it's worldwide, we're all seriously worried about our heating bills. Um, so we're minimising the amount of time that the heating is even going on. But I find that wearing um, yeah, a viscose or a drapey fabric skirt or dress actually works really well and it's not because the fabric itself is warm and cozy of course it's not but 
like now I'm wearing it with you know thick opaque tights and boots and obviously this polo polo neck um, but when it gets really cold because it's not too bad at the moment when it gets really cold I'll just wear leggings underneath and nobody is going to know and my other top tip is I always wear it's not it's not glamorous it doesn't look fabulous when you see but I have a habit in the winter of wearing really long socks you know like knee length socks underneath trousers and leggings and that sort of thing and so I find that the knee length socks and the leggings and you know a jumper you know maybe you've got a vest top or a cami top underneath it works really well um, so actually really that's what I'm wearing and the dress or the skirt is just a, a layer on top that doesn't make me look quite so much like I'm a mime artist. Um, so yeah, I'm a big fan of that because then of course when it comes to the summer or spring summer, you've then got an item that you can wear all year round. So I'm a big And in a similar vein, I then also out of viscose fabric made this, which I'll put on in a sec, uh, which is the Linda dress. It's a new dress sewing pattern and it's from Bella Loves Patterns, who I've talked about a lot recently, because that is the pattern company that has the Billy trousers that are my new favorite trousers. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen an image I put up last week, which is of a pair of Billy trousers in corduroy that I made for Minerva as part of their bloggers network, I think it's called. Um, so that's with gifted fabric, and I'll put a picture of those trousers up because that corduroy fabric I'm not just saying it because they gifted it to me um, that corduroy fabric is really really lovely it's a needle cord and it's got the kind of warmth of corduroy but it's still got a nice drape to it so for making those trousers with those center front pleats and the big wide leg they were absolutely brilliant or it was absolutely brilliant and I think it comes in quite a nice colour range, but it'd also make really nice shirts and dresses and things, but it's just lovely and cosy and warm to wear and beautifully soft, you know, one of those where you keep rubbing your own thighs. Um, so made that, but yes, Bella Loves Patterns. This is her new Linda dress, and I made my version with long sleeves. The pattern is a short sleeved. Um, let me put it on. Okay, so I think what I was starting to say is that I clearly made the version of this dress with the long sleeves. Now the dress on the pattern itself has uh, like a small short puff sleeve, but um, along with the pattern on YouTube is a full tutorial of how to make the dress in its entirety, but also if you wish to, how to do a long sleeve. Um, option so shows you how to draft that um, and that's what I did I will admit that I didn't look at the YouTube video for the rest of the construction I just followed the written instructions um, but I did just for the sleeve and I'm really pleased that I did I really like these big billowy sleeves however Right on cue, you can see the problem I'm having, um, which is my shoulders keep falling off. So the idea is you've got these elasticated sleeves. Um, yeah, it's not supposed to do that. Um, elasticated sleeves across the um, shoulder. And then you've got the sort of bust cups with a tie front. Let me just check, I'm not going to flash at you. Um, so yeah, tie front at the, uh, at the front. Um, I really like the design of this dress. Um, it does actually, on the skirt part of it, do exactly <laughs> what my skirt that I was wearing earlier does, in that it has a front split, um, again, not at the sides, at the front. So had I um, wanted to, I could have made my skirt from this pattern, but actually I made the skirt first before this pattern had even been released. Um, but yes, going back to my shoulders, that is definitely user error because on the instructions she does actually say, um, once you've added your sleeves on, she says, this is a good time 
to check the fit and to check that your elastic is right and isn't going to keep doing that. I thought I'd done that. <laughs> Clearly not. Um, so if you do make this dress, make sure that you make your elastic nice and tight because I'm now going to have to do some lovely unpicking and just pull a bit of the elastic out and put it all back in again. Which is not the end of the world, but kind of annoying. But I do really like the style. I like the, it's obviously quite fitted at the waist. I, of course, you know what I'm going to say here. Um, I did blend up a size at the waist because I am wider at the waist than any pattern measurements ever have me. Um, so I did blend up a little bit at the waist. Um, you've got a zip on the centre back. Um, I actually used a zip that I already had that was a tiny bit shorter than the recommended length, but I don't have any problems getting in and out of it, so it's fine. There's no need to go and run out and buy a new zip for no reason whatsoever. Um, and as always with Bella Love Patterns, really nice instructions. Her instructions are always about giving you a really nice professional finish. Um, you can, for example, choose to do a bias binding on your zip. Um, and she always has you using um, fusible seam tape on your seams and that sort of thing. I'm just going to have to get used to this, aren't I? Um, but I have to admit, I didn't do some of those things. Oh, I'll ignore my phone. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't bind the zip, and um, I was a little bit more, should we say slapdash? <laughs> um, I just kind of, yeah, I just sewed it all up and didn't bother with the seam tape and all the rest of it, so... Um, but I'm quite happy with it. I really like it and I will, once i fix fixed these blasted shoulders, um, I will definitely wear it through the winter like I'm doing now with, with tights. Um, I wouldn't be even in the least bit bothered about wearing it with um, some kind of top underneath just to give me warmth and then obviously it will see me through for the um, spring summer. The sleeve, this long sleeve, this is going to drive me nuts, this long sleeve has, um, at the cuff, it has um, shearing. So yeah, you've got a sheared cuff there with a very narrow hem, which gives a really nice detail. And I like that. And I like it in this um, drapey viscose. This is the viscose. I don't know if I mentioned it on here. I definitely put a post on Instagram. Um, this fabric... I saw it online and <laughs> I had to go and buy it straight away. It's from Paul, the chap at Longsight Market, which is here in Manchester. He has a store there three days a week, something like that. And it was £2.50 a metre. And I'm still very sad that I didn't buy more of his. He had a really nice autumnal viscose fabric that I made a Liberty shirt out of. I probably mentioned that. I showed that shirt recently. I think it was the last video or the one before. Um, and I'm really annoyed with myself that I didn't buy more from him. So when I saw this one, I bought 12 meters. <laughs> Got a little bit carried away, but I really like it because I find that for, the, for me, it's great because again, another black background, but these are all my kind of colors. So yeah, two pounds 50 meter. Um, so be prepared to see quite a lot of things in this because I've obviously got quite a lot of it to use up. But yeah, really like this pattern. Again, another really versatile one, so long as you don't do that. <laughs> um, and I'm dying to take it off because that's really annoying. But I'm going to show you something uh, that I think is a, a bit of a fail. So... You may remember that I bought this fabric a little while ago from Simply Fabrics um, and it's a double gauze. Is that train going to be annoying? I'm going to ignore it. Um, yeah, it's a double gauze and it's, but it's quite a thick double gauze and it's a fabulous, fabulous fabric. I saw it, I loved the colours in it. I thought these are my kind of autumnal colours. And I wanted to make a dress and I asked you all if you all had any brilliant suggestions for a dress that was kind of floaty and um, but you know great for winter 
and you all came up with some fabulous, fabulous suggestions. You are terrible enablers because it ends up costing me a fortune because I rush off and buy all the patterns. Um, yeah, I think I do that sometimes, don't I? I get people saying, you've enabled me. Anyway, uh, the one I went for was at the suggestion of Beverly, uh, co-host of Punk Frockers and on Instagram, I think she's called From Weeds to Flowers. I'll put a title up. Anyway, Beverly suggested the Etta dress from Merchant and Mills. And she did say at the time it's pretty fabric hungry, which it is. Um, it took something like five meters. And I had three meters of this fabric already. Um, and it is lined, it has a lined bodice, uh, not on the skirt. So I did think, oh, I'll see if I can squeeze it out of the three metres and just use something else for the lining, but I couldn't. So because I was having to order additional fabric um, just for the main body of the dress, I thought I might as well use the same for the lining as well and order it. So I've ended up, yeah, about five metres of this, but I am not convinced. So let me put it on because I would really welcome any feedback in the comments um, yeah, let me put it on and I'll show you what I'm not happy about. Okay, so if you're not familiar with this pattern, it is basically a light, yeah, as I said, a lined bodice with, try not to flash at you again, uh, a wrap over front. So you've got a tie on the inside here and then it wraps over and ties at the side. And it's a really good, healthy wrap, you know, it's properly doubled over so you're not worried about you know a gust of wind flashing um, which is always a danger with wrap dresses isn't it um, and I took Beverly's advice she said that she had sized down and I did the same off the top of my head I think I made a size 12 um, merchant and mill patterns are always oversized I found any of the ones I've made and their whole, whole aesthetic is quite sort of boxy isn't it um, so you kind of know that's part of what you get with them um, but yeah so size down for me the bodice doesn't have I'm not going because I made this a while ago no I'm, going, I'm not going mad it doesn't have any darts so it isn't supposed to be particularly fitted it's supposed to be loose it has got pockets and the side seams and it has a serious amount of gathering at the waist and I really like how the gathering looks kind of more so at the back than I do at the front it's I'm fairly sure it came in two lengths although lengths are a bit irrelevant aren't they because you can make it whatever length you like um, and this but I like this because see earlier conversation about long lengths so I wanted something pretty long um, I don't think I added anything to the length I think this was as the pattern as the pattern came um, but I just okay I've got a couple of issues first off I was drawn to this uh, fabric because of the colors I like autumnal colors it usually works really well with my coloring but I feel like it just, it's so similar to my hair colour that I feel like I just sort of blend in. And um, I sent a picture of me wearing it to my daughter, one of my, young, my youngest daughter, to see what she thought. Because I said, I'm just not sure about this. And the first thing she said is, it doesn't look great with your hair. Why don't you tie it up? So I thought, well, she's not wrong. I could tie my hair up I suppose and maybe that helps I'm not very good with knowing what to do with my hair up I tend to just scrape it back in a ponytail I've never managed to master the art of some glorious updo um but yeah I mean yes I think Grace had a point possibly with hair up is better but I find that the oversized aesthetic I think it may be that I like how it looks on other people, but I just, I just can't see me wearing this. I don't know. I just don't know. My plan was to wear it with tights and boots, maybe not black boots like I'm wearing, maybe I'd go brown, but 
and there's something about it is not doing it for me. It is, you know, there's quite a bit of room in there, but that's how it's supposed to be. I don't know. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Is it, is it one that I just have to say, okay, yes, you bought blooming five meters of fabric and let it go, or am I overthinking it? Do you all think it looks okay, and maybe I need to just try wearing it, or do I try to do I lop the top off and make it a skirt and separate them? Please let me know in the comments because. Yeah, I spent quite a lot of money on the fabric, really. So yeah, I'd really appreciate some feedback. I need help. <laughs> and then, what was the other thing I wanted to show you? Oh, yes. Okay, so this is a bit random, but bear with me. Right, a few years ago, I think it was when I started a blog, but before I did YouTube, I made this. It's looking pretty ratty now, um, because it gets worn a lot. And it is the Parker from Merchant and Mills, Merchant and Mills again. And I really love this coat. Um, it has the um, ribbed collar and it has toggles. You know, it's a proper Parker. It has like a channel, hold on, random red thread. Uh, yeah, it has a channel here for um, cord with a little toggle on it. And, um, and pockets and they now have which they didn't at the time I made this there is now also a hood extension which would be really useful to have and I was really pleased with this fabric that I bought at my local Abercarn because hopefully you can pick it up it's really nice and tweedy um, but on the inside it hit myself in the face um, it is fleece so it's fleece backed so I've never lined it, you know, it just has the usual collar. Um, but it's always been toasty and warm and um, it's pretty oversized. But yeah, I love this coat. It's got the, wearing it with this dress isn't helping really, um, but it has the fishtail hem with a little, little split and it has the cord matching cord so it's to match the cord at the waist it has the cord that runs through the back and pockets um so i love this jacket the coat i wear it every year it's come out ever since i made it it's a great one for just throwing on when you're doing a dog walk or over a pair of jeans you know it's that kind of go-to when you're not necessarily bothered about uh your sort of smart coat and I loved making it so much and I made it and my husband loved it and he said oh would you make me one so I rushed off to Abercarn's to see if they had the same fabric and they did but they had it in brown so I made even though it's supposed to be a women's pattern um, I sized up and there was a lot more of him then than there is now and I sized up and made one for Dave and I don't suppose that my camera is going to pick this up, but his one is in much better condition than mine because he's worn it once. Yeah, he only wore it once. So now, whenever he says, will you make me something, he gets more of a quizzing. You know, are you actually, you saying that, or are you actually going to wear it? Um, yeah, I think it's a really nice coat. I don't know why he doesn't wear it, but you know, He's one of those men that's very stuck in his ways, you know, tends to wear the same thing that he's worn since he was in his 20s. Anyway, why am I telling you about these two coats when I made them years ago? Well, let me show you. Hold on. I might change out of this dress, actually, because I'm not massively confident. Okay, so who wouldn't like their dog to be in a matching... Mona's here because she has FOMO and he can't catch any dogs because you're not very intelligent. But turn around. Okay, let's, let's walk you around. Can you model, Dobby? So I made his coat. Come on, this way. I made his 
<laughs> get up on, out of um, leftover the same fabric in Dave's, so it doesn't entirely match mine because his is the brown colorway, this is the green. And I also, I'll try and get a picture so you can see, I also did the ribbing around the neck, which isn't massively successful, it's slightly, slightly wanting to, actually maybe if we turn it, hold on, hold on you two, oh yeah, there you are, that works better if I turn it under, there you go, um, but I literally just copied the existing dove coat he had, which wasn't designed for um, sight hound, so it didn't have a deep chest to it, so I just added that a little bit. But because it's got the fleece on the inside, it's going to keep it nice and toasty. And, you know, it just does up with some Velcro. It's not going to be waterproof, so it's absolutely no use to me if it's raining, which, of course, it rains a lot here. Um, but, you know, what woman around town wouldn't like to, or man, wouldn't like to match their dog? Come on, Dobby, can we, can we do some modelling? No, you just, Lola doesn't need a coat. She doesn't get cold like he does. Come on. She's also, you may notice, a little more food motivated than the dogs. But yeah, just thought I would show you because it's a bit of fun. Okay, last bit of coercion. And I'll let you go. Yeah, I just thought it was a bit of fun to have a coat that matches your dog and you know, why not? One of the nice things about making our own clothes is we can do whatever we want. Um, so I've actually got some um, waterproof, uh, it's like a dry wax coat fabric. Um, they've still got it in stock actually. I bought it from Simply Fabrics. It's the Millerane stuff that normally retails at about £25 a metre and I think Simply Fabrics have it for 14 or 15 something like that. Um, so I bought some fabric from there in, uh, I think there's a couple of colours, but it's like a brown. And I'm going to make myself a raincoat from it using a Stylock pattern. And I can't, it might be called the Oxford Trench, something like that. I'll put an image anyway. Um, so that's my plan is to make one of those. But I ordered enough of that fabric so that we can have Dobbs matching me. Are you humiliated? No, you don't have enough brain cells to be humiliated, do you, Dobbs? No, you don't. Yeah, so that's pretty much about it. I am now up to date. I have now shown you everything that I had sort of up my sleeve, ready to show you. I don't know what I'm going to do this week because I've got quite a few options. Um, I bought some um, active wear fabric to make myself some leggings and a top to go to the gym, so I might do that this week. I bought some really nice um, cord fabric to make. Okay, if you on the rare chance happen to be one of my daughters watching, which is incredibly unlikely, don't listen. Uh, but yes, I'm going to make my daughter a pair of um, heyday dungarees from Waves and Wild uh, out of that cord and give it to her for Christmas. So I might do that this week. Um, I've also been making some fabric Christmas garlands, which doesn't sound very me, does it? Um, if you're interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments. I would really appreciate it. Um, so I might come back and show you that. That's somebody at my front door. So that sounds like a great time for me to finish up. Thank you very much, everyone. Please let me know um, feedback on that Merchant and Mills Etta dress. I'd really like to know whether you think I should you know, keep going or give up. Um, thank you very much, everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye.